In this video, I want to talk to you about sports card grading, what kind of cards you should send off, what you should be looking for when you're sending off. This is kind of a, a 101, grading 101 for people. Let's get into this. When I was a kid, this wasn't a thing. I know PSA has been around since like the mid 90s, but it wasn't like a common occurrence in the hobby. I personally, maybe it's partially because when I was when I was connected with, with the hobby as a kid, I wasn't so into, I, I didn't care about grading. And so from my personal collection perspective now, I still honestly don't care about grading, but I do find value in it sometimes for certain cards that I want to be reselling. Uh, and there are a few cards that I will have graded for my own personal collection. I have a a little, I just recently bought a little like wall hanging thing that holds like nine slabs inside of it. Um, and I think I'm going to limit my PC as far as graded cards to what I can fit in that display case. And if I find something that I get that I like more than one of them in there, then I'll just take that out, sell it and put the other one up there. So I think I'm probably gonna have about nine graded cards in my personal collection in total. Um, and then the rest of the graded cards, cards that I get graded um, or cards that I buy graded are I'm gonna be selling. But I'm very picky about what kinds of cards I'm going to be grading. And I feel like this is my advice for a new person in the hobby. A lot of people will talk about, you know, flipping to grade or buying raw to grade. Absolutely, you can make money in that area, but you have to be able to have experience and knowledge and really look closely before making decisions about things. Because very, very frequently, a card that comes back as a PSA 9 will sell the same as a raw card. This is just the reality right now for ultra modern cards. If it's a vintage card, it's going to be different. But in general, I would say be careful about what cards you want to send to grading. You're not going to make money on most of them. You send off 10 cards, two of them come back as a PSA 10, 10, and it makes up for the gap. But how much better if you had just sent off those two cards and not the other eight? And then it's only profit, and then you're not having to use those to make up for the lost profit of the other ones. So I think the most important thing, the biggest suggestion I would say is, one, basically never send a card off to get graded if its raw value is, is less than 20, never. If it's less than 50, very rarely, unless you look up a card on eBay, previous sold, and you can see that it's PSA 9 sells for a solid amount higher than the raw, but I kind of go in expecting that my raw card is gonna be a PSA 8. If, if I can break even at a PSA 8, then I'm gonna look closer and see if this card is worth sending in, if I can break even on a PSA 8. If, if I break even on a PSA 9 and I'm just hoping for that PSA 10, I am not expecting PSA 10s. PSA 10s are my extra thing. Like, ooh, I, it, it got it, it I did it, it's, I'm very lucky. But I'm only gonna do it if I at least make a little bit of profit on a PSA 9. That's one of the reasons why I don't send off that much that much to get graded. The other thing is to be sure to look closely at the card. There's a few things that the graders are looking at. You know, you can see on, on like BGS, they'll they'll share the four different categories of, of edges, corners, surface, and centering. For most of those, you can look. Buy yourself a small little loop if you would like to. Those can be less than a dollar even. And then Look closely, you know, with a really critical eye. Do you see scratches on the surface? That's going to lower it. It's going to be, you're not going to be able to get a PSA 10 if you have some mini scratches on the surface. How are the edges? Is there, you know, the edges and the, and the corners, um, you can see those easily, but at the same time, you really have to be critical about it. Like, not just be like, oh, that's small. That won't be a big deal. But it's like, oh, that's small that's probably gonna be a big deal. Like, I'm not gonna get a PSA 10 out of this. And the same with the edges. The, the edges, in, it, you know, a lot of times if it's a dark card, a black card, the edges will be more, like the, the imperfections will be more visible. So if it's a darker card, you have to be more careful. If it's a thick card, you have to be more careful. The edges, there's so much more edge potential for edge damage. So, you know, in my experience, sending off a, a thick card to PSA, you have to almost expect it to be a PSA 8. It's very rarely not a PSA 8, the thicker cards. So, you know, only send that off to, to PSA if you really truly think it has a genuine chance of getting higher than a PSA 8. Otherwise, don't send it. The key is not rushing it, not just going through and say grade, not grade, grade, not grade. It's take a card, see, okay, this one raw goes for $25. I'll put this in the maybe pile for now, but the probably not pile. <laughs> this one's 50, this one's maybe in the maybe pile. This one's 100, okay, this one I'll put in the more likely. And then in that more likely pile, go through and look and find all you can about the corners, the surface, the edges. And then with centering, you know, um, with some cards it's easy, if they have a border on them, it's, it's easier to gauge the centering. There's a lot of cards that it's really difficult to gauge what centered is supposed to be. Let me just see if I can if I can pull one off. Here's just one random card for a second here that I'm pulling off. Like 
There's no borders on this. I don't have any way of really knowing if this is centered. I, I don't know if there's supposed to be a little bit more, you know, this is supposed to be shifted that way or shifted that way. Maybe I can tell because of the gap on beam and the gap on team being equal, but in a lot of cards, that won't even be an option. You know, just the way that the card is designed, it might be really hard to find. Other cards, you know, base, prism rookies, base select rookies, you can usually figure out the centering. You, there's tools that you can get that you can put on your card and kind of get a sense. And as long as it's, you know, less than 60-40, left to right, 60, 40, up to down, usually you'll be pretty okay, or, you know, but but if it's anything close to that or, or obviously over that centering, it's gonna lower your grade as well. So you gotta be careful about that as well. So my basic advice to anybody who's getting into the hobby is don't send off a whole lot. You know, you gotta learn it. So I would just send off a few. Grading is expensive. Uh, you know, you send off $20 per card to, to PSA, let's say. Send off 10 cards, you spent $200. That's And then you don't get those cards back for quite a while. That's $200 that maybe you could have done some other moves in the hobby. If you're trying to make money, you could have bought some other stuff and sold some other stuff during that time that you're waiting. So you really have to make sure it's worth your while. So I would just suggest you do your research. Look on eBay, previous sold really analyze like what is a PSA 8, what is a PSA 9, what is a PSA 10. If if this card gets a, a PSA 8, have I at least broken even? That's kind of my um, my approach to it. Other people will say different things. You know, other people, I've seen a lot of people who will do it based on quantity. They're just like, I am going to send off hundreds of cards constantly. I'm going to get enough. I'm going to get better and better at this. I'm going to be able to read and understand what what's likely to get a PSA 10 and my, my ability to, to, to gauge a PSA 10 is going to get better and better. And But I'm just going to keep flinging these things off and losing money on some, gaining money on some, and just, you know, having enough profit over, over losses to make it worth my while. There's people who will do it that way. I am not that kind of person at all. That is just like, that's so much money that's just in somebody else's hand. My pro, my, my, it's in their hands for two or three months, you know, sometimes more, sometimes less. I don't, I don't want to do that. My cards I have off for grading right now, some of them have been in, have been in PSA's hands now for three months, you know, and, and in a, a year ago, two years ago, even that would have been a small amount of time. Maybe they're going to get better and I think they are getting better at, at turnaround times. But, you know, even if you really think a card will get a PSA 10 and you are good at it, they're grading more than a million cards a month. They're not able to look with the kind of focus that you can look with. I think sometimes when they're not sure or if there's something that's like, I'm not sure if this is good, this is enough to turn it into a PSA 9 or a PSA 10, they might err on the side of, of a PSA 9 anyway. I, I feel like even if you really get good at recognizing what a PSA 10 is going to be, it doesn't mean that that's what's going to happen. It's graded by humans. Humans are seeing things differently. They're, they're in a rush sometimes. They didn't have their morning coffee sometimes. Like every, every, There's no guarantee on what you're going to get back. Back. So that's why I'm extra careful on, on what I send to get graded. Anyway, I hope this was a useful video for you in some way. If you have any uh, thoughts or if you have suggestions for people that are different than what I'm suggesting, I know people have different approaches to how they're grading cards. If you have some thoughts about it that you think is, is good for everybody watching this video, share in the comments below. Uh, you know, I think it's good to dialogue about these things. I don't think the way I'm doing it is necessarily right. <laughs> it's just the way I'm doing it. So that's all I'm sharing here. So anyway, Hope that's good for you. See you in the next video. Peace.